Hi, and thanks for watching. Today, we're going to walk through the steps for installing your cable TV set-top box. Included in your installation kit is a set-top box, and depending on what services you've signed up for, the set-top box may look differently, but the steps are all the same. Also in the kit, you'll have a coax cable, an HDMI cord, a power cord, and a remote control. Before we get started installing your set-top box, here are a few tips and tricks to keep in mind. Number one, do not plug the set-top box into an electrical outlet until after you have connected the set-top box to your TV set, the cable outlet, and other devices. Ensure that all connections are firmly connected, and that means finger tight. You don't need to use a wrench or any other tool to make them extremely tight. They just need to be tight enough that they're not gonna wiggle loose and fall off. Allow about two inches of space on all sides of the box to allow for proper cooling. Do not place the set-top box near a heat source that could potentially cause it to overheat or not cool properly. Do not expose the set-top box to moisture. Unplug it before cleaning, and please do not use liquids or aerosol cleaners. If you want to clean dust off of it, we recommend using a paper towel or a dry cloth. If you want to clean it more thoroughly than that, use some type of disinfectant wipe. Now we'll walk through the, the simple steps to install your set-top box. First, you're going to want to connect one end of the coax cable to the cable outlet that's coming from your wall. You'll connect the other end to the cable box. And you need to find the um, port on here that says either cable in or RF in. And again, these don't need to be super tight, just finger tight will work. So once that's done, we'll connect the HDMI connection. Your HDMI cord may have little plastic protectors on the end of each side. Please take those off before you try to connect it. So first, we'll connect one end of this to your TV set um, into one of the HDMI connections. Your TV may have multiple HDMI inputs, so please make note of that input that you're connecting this to. Once you've connected it to the TV, you're going to connect the other end to the HDMI port on the set-top box. And it will be clearly labeled with HDMI. Um, keep in mind they do need to go in a certain way. You'll see there's a shorter, kind of narrower end, and a wider end. So once that's done, you're going to plug in the power cord. First, you're going to plug it into the set-top box. And again, please keep in mind that your box may vary from the one here, so the end of the power cord may look different. But you'll find the power port and plug that in. Lastly, you'll plug the other end of the power cord into an electrical outlet we'll turn the TV on. Um, using the remote control for your TV set, change the TV input setting to the HDMI input that you use to connect the set-top box. If you don't have the remote control for your TV, please check the sides or top or back of your TV as many TVs have buttons that will allow you to control the settings from there. Please note that the set-top box may take several minutes to load, so program data may not be available immediately. Once the set-top box has loaded and you see program data, now would be a great time to program your remote control to control both the cable box and your TV. Um, and you'll see instructions on this page for help doing that. Instructions are also included in the bag with your remote control. If you experience any issues during setup of your set-top box or your, your remote control, please click the Contact Us button at the bottom of this page to get in touch with our Customer Care Center. You can also find answers to your other questions on the support site at support.mctvohio.com. Thanks for watching.